Okay. So I thought I'd show how to uh, upgrade some memory or add some memory in uh, SSD M.2 into the Intel Nook uh, that I have here. This is Intel Nook 7 i5 B and K, if you guys are really not wondering. Not going to care too much about the details. That's stuff we can look up online. Maybe I'll provide a link just if you care. So there's obviously four screws here uh, that are also the foot pads. So I'll go ahead and just unscrew those. Uh, as people may or may not know, when you get an Intel Nook, if you buy it online and you don't buy it from a, a full shop, uh, it is incomplete. You need to add memory and you need to add a hard drive. And then you would have to actually add your operating system of choice, be it Windows or Linux. I happen to be adding Linux to this eventually, but today I will show you my adding of the SSD. So if you get them all done and pull it all up so you know it's not, it's pretty easy. You should just be able to lift it straight up. And you do. Great. And as you can see here, <clears throat> you have the memory slots. And then you have here uh, would be the M.2 drive there. Okay, looking good. So I'll go ahead and start out with the memory. Uh, I'm sorry, with the SSD. So, again, uh... You know, your choice of SSDs and memory is all personal. Uh, sometimes it's related to just how much you want to pay for it or what you anticipate your PC or this Nook is going to be used for. For me, it's just kind of a desktop replacement uh, for Linux. I just use laptops mostly, but uh, nice to have something a little more stationary. It's been a project I've been working on for a little while here. Alrighty, so you get your memory ready now. In general, there's always a screw somewhere to lock the SSD drive, especially M.2, into place. Alright, so you can look at the pins. Kind of fits only one way. Put a little bit of an angle in it and then push it down. Get your screw back in. Screw it down nice and tight. Make it tight, but don't make it too tight. Just, you know. Just taunt. Okay, so that's the M.2 drive. Up next is the uh, memory. So, again, buy your favorite brand, favorite kind that you like. Uh, it is nice if these nooks can go up to 32 gigs. Uh, that's always a nice helpfulness if you're doing it. I am not having 32 gigs, uh, but it does do DDR4, and I am not at 32. I believe I'm going to be at 16. Uh, that's what I bought. All right, again, you can look at these. There's usually one way to do it. And in this case, you got two banks. You got a bottom bank and a top bank. So obviously, it would help out to do the bottom bank first before you do the top bank. Trick is coming in a little bit of an angle on this. Then you seat it well, and you push directly down. Shouldn't be too hard to pressure. Some models are a little harder than others, uh, but you know, a little bit of force into it. Again, a little bit of an angle. Put it in. Put it down. And that's the memory. So, what you got going on here is you have the M.2 drive and you got the memory installed. At this point, we can seal it up and uh, fire it up in the BIOS and see how well we did. So, let's go ahead and put this back on. 
see how it goes. Go ahead and just tend to screw them in a little bit on each of them and then I get them taunt or tighter after I get all four. Um, just to the crit point, not much, not needed to go much higher. Not like a laptop that we're moving around much. And there we go. We have new SSD added and some memory added. Up next, we'll have to uh, hook this up and see, look in the BIOS and see how everything checks out. Okay, so I was able to hook it up and get the BIOS on, and it's on the new, I guess, newish uh, Intel Visual BIOS. But don't really want to be playing with that. What I want to be looking at to make sure that it can see everything I need to do. So you can see even right up here, total system memory 16 gigs is exactly what I added. And you know, you can always look over here and see if you're looking to legacy, you see the, the 500 gig uh, SSD that I added, which is wonderful. Uh, even more information, next screen here, you get more about the board and all that. And it is showing everything that I expected to see. So this looks like it's all good and set up, ready for uh, putting on my OS. That will be the next step here sometime soon. Next time I'll be talking about Pop OS, the Linux distribution by System76. I've been using POP on several workstations over the last few months. I've really enjoyed it. Check them out if you're interested. Thanks for watching.